Welcome back to my Colorado Mountain Garden. And today I'm in front of um, what's going to be my new trough for some garlic this year. Um, this happens in size to be about 32 inches from for the long side by 19 across. And the way I have it set up right now is for um, some of my smaller gar garlic like uh, Northern White, Russian Red. Uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember but if if i was going to plant like something like my Mo montana giants in here i wouldn't plant them quite as close um this bed is not totally ready yet it's been amended and i set it up it has old soil in the bottom from some of my container plants because garlic doesn't grow that deep but i wanted to fill up the trough which is about two and a half feet tall um, before I plant my garlic, but I wanted to do this video so that you have a chance to think about what you're going to do with your garlic. Um, I am going to, I will fill it with compost probably to about here. And then after I plant my garlic, the reason why I keep it a little bit down below the lip is that I'm going to put straw over the top to help insulate it and hold the moisture in during the winter. Most of that straw will come off. Um, once spring comes, but I want it to, to be there to protect the plants and the bulbs. So this, I can't remember if I mentioned it, this will handle of the smaller garlic about 75 bulbs and that's planted two inches from the side. It's not scientific here. Um, and then two inches apart. Uh, my tool of choice for doing garlic and I've used a lot of things I've used just a shovel and made a row and then set the garlic in and I've used a stick um, you kind of name it I've used it so but um, this is what's known as a garden dibbler and they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon um, I've had these for probably three or four years they came in a pack of three the other two are just in my garden shed um, and they have marks on here going up to four inches so this is two inches that's three inches and then up here is four inches um if i'm dealing with my montana giants i would also probably put a sharpie mark across here and that's just so i can see it and these sharpie marks will wear off as you wash the um dibbler it's you can put it on the top shelf of your dishwasher and wash it in there you can just wash it in the sink and you can sterilize it with um, bleach and everything before you use it but so for like my montana giants i would go two and a half inches apart so from here down to there so when i measure my holes they'd be two and a half inches long it might be easier to see it this way and then i go about three inches on any of the garlic that i grow that's considered a giant um i went back to another one and again i apologize i just I don't have the garlic in front of me. I just know what I ordered. I went back to some of the ones that have done really well. I had quite a bit of garlic that failed this year. It was new garlic to me, um, like Janus Red. Every Janus Red, I planted it in several beds. Um, didn't show up. I don't know if... I have to think that it was either not good for my climate or maybe it wasn't cured properly although it was very well um, dried out so you know who knows could have been our weather um, last year we got our first snow on September 9th so uh, my garlic most of it's supposed to ship about mid-September um, so I'm guessing that I'm gonna get it in probably the third or fourth week of September um, this year because I ordered early and I'm able to do that. Now some of my garlic that I grew that I'm going to use for stock may not go in until a little bit later. It just depends on how well it has dried out. And you don't want to try, if, if you save planting stock and you pulled late like some of mine that I did and it's not dried out so when you break those um, cloves out of the bulb if they're not all dry you don't want to plant them all you're it's going to do is rot there is nothing to protect that bulb 
So when you break open your cloves, sorry, your bulbs, you want to make sure that the cloves are still have the skin around them. You don't want to peel those off. And you always want to use the big ones. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you how this little dibbler works. So I'm just going to fill in some of the holes here. Um, it's pretty easy. You can just punch it down. So if this was going to be a Montana giant, I could punch it down. To, that's the three inch mark. And I could even wiggle it around to make it a little bit wider, depending on how big the clove is. Um, if you hear a buzzing, I've got one of my bees flying around, so you might hear that. But, you know, again, that's why I have to, on the, the larger cloves, I've got to separate them a lot farther versus just the two inches. So this is just the hopefulness. Um, if the cloves come in bigger, then I won't have 75 bulbs in here, but I could if they were all about standard size on those varieties that which I'm used to growing, um, I could fit 75 of those in there. I'm guessing for the if this if I did this bed with a, a Montana Giant or I also have a German Extra Hardy coming in that that's a pretty big clove, it would be probably more around the 60 cloves maybe even 55 not cloves plants 60 or um, 55 plants that I could grow in here just so that I give myself enough space another thing you can do um, if you only have one small bed and, and you're not trying to max it out another thing you can do is you can um, sp space them out a little farther like this and then you can plop one in the middle. So keep that in mind, however you're planting. You can do the four and then plop one in the middle. I like doing mine in rows just because it's easier for me to identify um, which varieties are there. So I, I take everything all the way down a full row. But if you only have a couple varieties, um, again, you can make, you know, like a, it's like a little five thing. So, and that's about... Oh, that's going to be a, a little less than two and a half inches across. Um, that's a little short. I could have brought that down. But again, it's not an exact science. They're going to grow. I never have had problems with my garlic being too overcrowded uh, because not all of it is going to be the biggest bulb. Um, you are going to have some smaller ones mixed in there, and you may have... Uh, in a situation like I did this year, have some that don't germinate at all. So don't be worried about it. I hope this video is helpful and I will come back when I do get my garlic um, and I will measure it all out. I get all my holes ready. Then I go in and I separate my cloves and then I come out and I plant it all together. So I will be back um, in a few weeks, hopefully, and I will show you that process. Hope you're having a wonderful day and happy gardening.